Sehr geehrte Presidents, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I came to the plenary chamber this morning and I thought to myself, I wouldn't like to be in Mr. Samaras's shoes today. I listened to your speech carefully. Having heard that speech, it seems to me that I was pretty right in thinking it's not easy to play this role right now here in Europe. It's difficult to play this role. Mr. Samaras, I would argue that it's a big mistake to come before this parliament, and recently you went to Berlin, it's a big mistake to say everything's fine, the reforms are underway, we have expectations vis-a-vis -vis Greece, these expectations are being met. Now I've been to Greece, we've been to Greece and we've seen that over recent years this is not entirely true. Expectations are met in terms of figures and on paper you can prove that you have uh, cut a number of jobs, you can also prove that you have cut down on public expenditure, yes, but what's happening in parallel to that? Something that is not mentioned clearly enough by the Greek government, and perhaps it's because it's too much to ask, but what has not emerged clearly from your speech either is the fact that what you, you know, what you actually need for your country, Greece, this wonderful country with people who know a lot, who can do a lot, who want a lot, to, to get them on board for these reforms, that is not working out. The kind of reforms that you have imposed on Greece and which have been imposed also and monitored by the Troika, this type of reform is killing off precisely what we need if we want to make sure that Greece is a country, the kind of country that citizens actually want. You have a situation today where public institutions are not working. They're not working. Uh, the state is talking about what it's doing vis-a-vis -vis its citizens. Look at what you're doing with schools, with universities, with hospitals. Everything is in a deplorable state. It's almost incredible. It's hard to fathom that in a European country in the year 2014, people who are suffering from cancer can no longer get the treatment they need. It's hard to fathom. And this is unfortunately the situation that has arisen after years and years of reform. I think you need to say this here in this chamber and also vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Gabriel and Mrs. Merkel in Germany. You have to stand up and say that if Greece is to be a country where reforms work out, then you can't just look at the savings uh, targets that are being met. There is a second part to this pact, and that second part has to be met as well. I'm referring to the common effort that has to be deployed in order to lift Greece not only out of recession, but out of depression. And I'm pleased that you said earlier on that you're no longer dealing with a recession, you're do dealing with a depression. Thank you for saying that. The figures that we have on growth are risible, laughable compared to the unemployment figures that we have right now in Greece. So you must act and you must act with urgency. In Greece, people feel they have a great sense of injustice. People are thinking this is not fair. The kind of burden that is being imposed upon the nation is not being imposed evenly. And also, look at the fears in other member states of the EU. They fear the post-crisis situation where people who are already doing well will be doing even better and those who have problems will sink ever deeper into those problems. My colleague Mr. Verhofstadt said this earlier on very well. Greece is the country to which we all turn when we're looking at the future of Europe. We all, we all have our eyes peeled on you. You have to bring your people on board, your nation on board. You can't just have, you know, the elite leaving the country. There is a real threat of a brain drain and this is a real attack on what's happening in Greece and the kind of reforms you actually need. A final comment, if I may. Uh, you talked about uh, policy and recession. Uh, this morning I read the German papers and I saw that the European Commission would like to look at ecology, innovation and our economies from that point of view, but also depart from previous lines. Mr. Oettinger, Mrs. Hedegaard, Mr. Barroso, it would appear that they're not really happy to play the lead on environmental issues and climate change issues. Now, my fear is that green technology, uh, renewable energy sources, energy efficiency, things that could actually generate growth and jobs quickly that unfortunately even 
Brussels is torpedoing these projects. That's my fear. Isn't this a crazy situation? You have such a wonderful country. You have so many assets in terms of your environment, your nature, your tourism potential. Wouldn't it be awful to destroy all of that because you simply want to refer to a kind of stone age, if you like, returning to fossil fuels, looking at that rather than other opportunities? It is crazy. You have so many assets. Uh, there's a Canadian company right now which is exploiting your natural resources. The Scurious Forest as well by Mount Athos. The fact that you now have Canadian ownership of that or, or, or interest in that, I find that completely unbelievable. And this is a problem of leadership in Brussels as well. It's not just the Troika. Also, politicians, politicians who are actually advocating a policy which is backward-looking rather than forward-looking, they are not being responsible either.